Hi right, guys, I uh, got my old MDF board ready, cut out my holes, honeycombed it, kind of like I was talking about on the form. Um, getting ready to laminate it. I just went ahead and sanded off the majority of that plastic dip that I originally put on this. Uh, it's not going to matter. Um, if you guys have already painted jaws, it doesn't matter if you have, you can laminate right over on top of it, so it should be fine on that. Uh, got a brush, you can use a roller. Uh, this is some contact adhesive uh, made by Wilson R. They got different brands, cheaper and easier, whatever. Anyway, what we got to do, we got to cover this surface on this, and then we've got to cover the surface on the laminate. We let them both sit until they get tacky, and then we slap them together around the edges. So, uh, probably be fast forwarded through some of this stuff, but you'll get the idea. I'm going to start with the laminate so that I can put it up here and work on it. On the board part, one of the main things you want to do is make sure that you get the edges. So go ahead and load it up pretty good on the edges. When you've got a, if you've, if you've got a porous surface, some, some plywoods and veneers on them are gonna be a little more porous than others and soak it up better. Um, but you might wanna go ahead and put a, you put a coat on everything and then just go back around and put another layer right on the outside edges. Um, this laminate has a tendency around the edges to, to pull up if it's not glued good. All covered up. We're gonna let this sit. It'll probably be, depending on your board, between I don't know, 10 and 20 minutes that we're gonna let this stuff sit. The the goal is to get whenever you touch this stuff to where it doesn't, it's not wet, but it also doesn't have the little fingers. I don't know. You probably can't see it on there, but there's little fingers that grab onto mine and and pull up off of there. We don't want any of those fingers. It just wants to be kind of a a touch and a pull off a stick, just like a, a, a stamp or something. Alright, so we're ready to put this laminate on. It's a good idea if, uh, if you've got two people to use two people so you can lay this down if you don't have just a whole lot of waste of space. But um, if you don't have two people, you just like to do your best and make sure you can get it lined up right. So. Once you get it on, you just press it on. Um, if you have these loose edges that are, are overhanging and you're pushing down on it too hard, you can break this stuff. So uh, you definitely want to be careful on that. All right, um, need to go over some rider safety. I, I skipped that a minute ago. Uh, I've already got this thing done, but anyway, with this router. When you hold it, you'll see me, and I've got one grip on it. I'm usually put another hand up here to where I've got something where I can hold this thing stable. Um, this blade is going to be turning, I don't know, four or five, six thousand RPM, and can can mangle your fingers pretty quick. But um, one of the most important things you got to know is you've got to push this thing away from you. Never ever come back at you because the way that the blade rolls, it's going to try to run at you. So if I'm, if I'm going this way and I hadn't cut all the way into it, you'll see me backing up on it, but it's after I've already gone over a whole line and got it already done. And then I might come back and, and just touch up, clean up going backwards. But if you hadn't cut that already, this thing will take off at you. And when it does, it kicks up and can get into your hip, or if you've got your hands like this right here, and you run, it'll run back at you and could, could get all in your fingers. So definitely gotta hang on to it keep it flat on the surface, and always push. Um, I wouldn't recommend going backwards at all. 
Okay, now we're ready to route. Um, you probably want to test on a smaller piece. You can take a, a little chunk of this, glue it onto a scrap or something so that you can set the depth of your router. There's all sorts of different router bits that you can use. Um, I'm using, uh, I think it's a beading bit. Uh, you can use a cove or um, you can even use like a roundover. They make some tips too that are that are made specifically for uh, for my kit with plastic laminate, but uh, I'm not really a big fan of them. I like to see a little bit of an edge if I'm not doing just a straight, uh, straight 90 degree edge. Okay, so a few tips on this router. I'm holding it the wrong way. If you just grab onto it like that, it's it's not the, it works good for me. If you got big enough hands to grab onto it, um, you always want to also have another hand on this. The, the goal of the whole process is to keep this surface here flat as possible on this one as you're running around and, and keep a grip on it. This thing is kind of like a gyroscope whenever it's going. Um, and when you've got it on, if you tilt it one way or another, it tries to wobble and, and, and roll out of your hands. So you got to be really careful. Uh, routers are, are definitely responsible for mangling a bunch of digits. So. Um, also, before you plug it in, check, make sure that you've got uh, the bottom of this is clean and, and not going to scuff up what you're working with. So, uh, after that, we're just going to, I'm going to make a quick pass around the whole thing and, and kind of get this trimmed to shape. And then I'm going to make a second run that, that really cleans it up and, and gets the finished product. One thing to note, whenever you wrap, if this edge on the outside is not smooth or, or perfectly the shape that you want, you're going to see every bit of it in these lines. And, and with a beading bit or something like that, it, it produces kind of two, two lines on here. So, you know, it can really, you need to take your time and make sure it's smooth and in the shape that you want. And even if it's not, like I, I see here now on this, I've got a little flat spot. I can go back and smooth this out and then reroute it. Anyway, you can smooth this out, reroute it, and, and get everything cleaned up. Or you can just go around and paint the edges of it black, same color, and you probably never see it anyway. So, anyway, that's how you do it. All right, let me show y'all how to drop in, uh, do the groove that Rhodes had suggested on the form. So, first thing I'm gonna do, I need to copy and get this radius on here. So, I'm gonna make a copy of this, Cut it out. Then we're going to take and find our, our center with our router, drill a hole here, and then run our router along this line. Uh, kind of get what we're looking for on the, uh, the radius in that groove. I've got this board big enough to where I can clamp it, but I just marked both sides of it so that I'll be able to slide it back and make sure that I'm still in line here. And then I'll, I'll find center for where we want to put this groove in 
and then we'll drop in and, and, and do it. So. I'm going to drill a hole in this. Um, good idea to use a spade bit that's got these little ears on them. Um, that's going to give you a really precise, clean cut through this stuff. Whenever you use a larger bit, um, if you just start going in straight in with that bit, you got a real, real possibility of having that thing wall around and not make a perfect circle. So if you don't have spade bits, get a, a start with a small bit, start working your way up but go slow because this this plastic will grab a bit and chunk in and, and what it'll do is it'll break um, instead of cutting through there so you have to go go down really slow. The good thing about a spade bit is it's got these sharp points already on the outside so it really cuts a clean line. That's generally what happens whenever you start cutting out the heat from it and everything else will, will mess that glue up. But you cut out that, I've got a perfect hole now. All right, so now that we've got that, we need to find center on our router. I've got a, a small bit, it's not a plunge bit, um, but it is for, for routing grooves like this for freehanding and and uh, doing design and detail. I'm going to center this thing up in this hole. Main thing I'm looking at is this way. I'm, I, I'm, I'm going to be cutting in this way, so it doesn't matter where that one goes. But once I get that, then I can bump this up to it and get it set in there good. We'll double check our lines, make sure they're good. Now I'm going to clamp this down and then I'm going to wrap it. Second thing, I didn't mark how far on each side I wanted to go, so. <clears throat> you guys notice, I, I, man, I should have done it going in, but we put this in place, make sure that nothing's in a bind. I'm in my, my larger hole. I turned it on there. I turned it off there. If you're in that little bitty groove and you try to pull this thing up, it's going to be like playing that game doctor or whatever with the electrical things. You, you're going to get in the bind and it's going to end up kicking on you or tearing up your material. So drop in, free into the open hole, turn it off there. These edges on here are pretty sharp. If you have just a, a, a small file or something something little that you can take and run around the edge of this, it'll help clean up this edge for one. I've got a couple little bitty burrs here, um, but it also makes it where you know you run your hand across it and it's and it's smooth. Um, that's about it.